saved you. Thomas is a really useful tank engine. Whenever anyone is in trouble, Thomas is always there to help. And because Thomas helps, deliveries are made on time without confusion and delay. One day, Thomas was at Maithwaite Station. The Fat Controller arrived on board Percy. Thomas, I need you to collect a very important passenger. He's a fireman and a hero. He rescued Lady Hutt's cat from a tree. A hero? Now we're going to give him a medal. Thomas puffed away to collect the fireman. He was very excited. He was going to meet a real hero. On the way, Thomas saw lots of children at the bus stop. They were excited too. We're going to see the fireman. Bertie, the bus is taking us to the medal ceremony. Up ahead, Thomas saw a water tower through the trees. The water tower was starting to wobble. Thomas saw Duck was right next to it. Oh no, the water tower is going to fall on Duck. I must rescue him. Thomas blew his whistle loudly. Quick, Duck, move now! Duck puffed quickly forward as the water tower crashed to the ground. I rescued you. No, you didn't. Rocky was putting the water tower on my flatbed and now it's smashed. Thomas hadn't seen Rocky. Rocky had been hidden behind the trees. I'm sorry, but I don't have time to help you. I have to collect the fireman. He's a hero. Later, Thomas saw a tree. It had fallen onto the tracks. That looks dangerous, thought Thomas. I must go and tell the signalman. Thomas backed up to the signal box. There's a tree on the line. The engines must take another track. The signalman changed the points. Just then, Harvey raced towards the junction. He changed tracks and puffed down the other line. Harvey was surprised. Thomas was very pleased with himself. I rescued Harvey, Thomas thought proudly. Now I'm a hero. Thomas chuffed on to collect the firemen. He saw Donald and Douglas stuck behind the fallen tree. I hope Harvey gets here soon. Aye, we can't go anywhere until he moves this tree. Thomas knew he'd made a mistake. Oh no, I made Harvey take the other track. I'm not a hero at all. We need Harvey. I'm sorry, but I don't have time to find Harvey. I have to collect the fireman. He's a hero. Then, Thomas saw Toby. Smoke and steam billowed from Toby's axles. Toby's broken down on Gordon's express line. Oh no, here comes Gordon. I have to rescue Toby. So Thomas puffed quickly back to the points. He changed over onto the express line. Thomas buffered up behind Toby and shunted him as fast as he could. Ooh, uh, help! Don't worry, Toby. Thomas shunted Toby off the express line and into a siding. Gordon chuffed past. He didn't see Toby. I rescued you. No, you didn't. Gordon was bringing an engineer to fix me. Thomas knew he'd made another mistake. I haven't rescued anyone. I'm not a hero. And now the fireman won't get to the medal ceremony on time. Thomas felt terrible. 
Just then, Percy puffed up. Percy, will you go and pick up the fireman for me? Percy was very pleased. You'll have to hurry. The medal ceremony starts soon. So Percy raced away. Thomas knew what he had to do now. Thomas collected the engineer from Gordon and took him to fix Toby. Then Thomas found Harvey. He took Harvey to move the fallen tree. Harvey soon cleared the track. Thomas puffed sadly back to Tidmouth. Then he saw Bertie the bus. The children were standing around him. What's the matter? I'm stuck in the mud. Now I can't take the children to the medal ceremony. Shall I take the children for you? Yes, please. So all the children climbed on board Annie and Clarabelle, and Thomas puffed away. Thomas arrived at the medal ceremony just in time. The fat controller and Lady Hat gave the fireman his medal. The children were very happy. You're a hero. And you're our hero, Thomas. Thomas the hero beamed from buffer to buffer. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. Rosie's Fun Fur Special. Rosie is a lively little tabbit. She is very quick. She also likes to be very busy. Any job is a good job for Rosie. One day, Rosie and Emily were at Knapford Station. The fat controller had some important news. The Fun Fur train is waiting at Brendam Docks. Rosie was excited. She hoped the fat controller would ask her to pull the funfair train. Emily, you must pull the funfair special. Rosie was disappointed. Rosie, you must be Emily's back engine. Rosie didn't want to be the back engine. She wanted to pull the funfair special on her own. I have a lot to do today. After we pull the funfair special, I have to collect milk from High Farm. Rosie puffed sadly along. She wished she could pull a special on her own. Then Rosie had an idea. If she arrived at the docks before Emily, she could take the fun fur special. Then Emily could puff straight to Hill Farm. That would really help Emily. So Rosie raced off as fast as her pistons would pump. Rosie puffed alongside the fun fur special. This is a very long train. Rosie couldn't see that Emily was already coupled up and waiting for Rosie. Rosie quickly coupled up to the Funfair special. Emily will be pleased, she thought. Still, Rosie didn't know that Emily was on the other end of the train. Then there was trouble. Rosie huffed and puffed. She heaved and hauled. The couplings groaned and strained until one of them snapped. Hooray! I'm pulling the Funfair special! 
But Rosie had left half of it behind with Emily. Rosie puffed proudly along. The children were very excited to see Rosie pulling a fun fur special. That made Rosie happy. Then there was trouble. Another coupling snapped. Up ahead, Bertie was carrying children to the fun fur. Rosie chuffed by. Bertie started to toot his horn. He's tooting at my fun fur special, thought Rosie. But Bertie was tooting because the coconut truck was rolling toward the level crossing. It smashed against the gate. Coconuts rolled everywhere. The level crossing was blocked, but Rosie didn't know. She puffed happily on. Then another coupling snapped. Rosie passed Stepney in a siding. Stepney was waiting to puff onto the main line. The points changed. Stepney blew his whistle loudly. He's whistling at my fun fur special, thought Rosie proudly. But Stepney was whistling because the truck of sugar was now rolling towards him. Stepney was covered in pink sugar from funnel to footplate. But Rosie didn't know. She puffed proudly on. Rosie steamed up Gordon's Hill. Another coupling snap. She heard an engine's whistle. They're whistling at my fun fur special too, Rosie thought happily. But it was Emily with the rest of the fun fur trucks. Rosie's flatbed was now rolling back towards Emily. It bashed into Emily. Seats from the big wheel clattered and clanged all over the tracks. Emily was stuck. Rosie chuffed cheerfully into Maithwaite Station. Nobody waved or whistled. The fat controller was cross. I told you to be Emily's back engine. But I brought the funfair special all on my own, sir. I wanted to help Emily. You haven't helped anyone. You have caused confusion and delay. You've left half the train. Now there will be no fun fair for the children. Rosie felt terrible. She had wanted everyone to be proud of her, and now they were cross. Please, sir, I know just what to do. I'm a very quick engine. I can collect all the trucks. Then I'll be Emily's back engine, and we will deliver the fun fair special in time. So Rosie whooshed off as fast as her wheels would wear. First, Rosie collected Rocky. Then she pulled them as quickly as she could to Emily. Emily's tracks were still blocked. I'm so sorry, Emily. I only wanted to help you. Rocky will clear the line, I will collect the other trucks, then we can deliver the fun fur special together. Thank you, Rosie. Rosie left Rocky and she raced away to collect the first truck. She picked up the coconut truck. Then Rosie collected a new truck of sugar and she raced back to Emily. Rosie had been very quick. Rocky had just loaded the seats back onto the flatbed. I'm ready to be your back engine now. And together they set off up Gordon's Hill. Rosie and Emily arrived at Maithwaite. All the children waved at the two engines. We have delivered the fanfare special in time. That evening, Rosie and Emily watched the children at the fanfare. The children were having a wonderful time. I hope we can work together on another special. The sooner the better. Working with you is best of all. Rosie couldn't have felt happier. Henry gets it wrong. The Sodor wishing tree is a very old tree. 
It's older than Edward, older than Sir Handel. It's even older than the Fat Controller. Some say it's the oldest thing on the island. All the engines and children love to make wishes whenever they see the tree. Especially Henry. He thinks the wishing tree is magical. He whistles whenever he passes. One day, the Fat Controller arrived with some very bad news. A summer storm struck Sodor last night. The wishing tree was hit by lightning. All the engines were upset. Henry was the most upset of all. Some special woodsmen are arriving at Brendam Docks. Henry, you must take them to the wishing tree right away. Henry knew this was an important job. They have to be back at Brendam Docks by tea time. That's when their boat leaves. Yes, sir. And Henry puffed away as fast as he could. He chuffed towards Brendam Docks. At a junction, Henry decided to take the track that passed the wishing tree. Henry arrived at the wishing tree. It wasn't standing tall anymore. Some leaves were gone and some branches were broken. Sometimes, Henry, special woodsmen have to cut trees down. Oh, no. Now Henry was even more upset. Henry took the track to Brendan. His boiler bubbled and his steam sighed. But then he had to stop. Toby was blocking the line. He had snapped the piston rod. Oh dear, I can't get to Brendam if the track is blocked. Then Henry had an idea. If all the tracks were blocked, no one would be able to get to the tree, he thought. Then no one would be able to cut the tree down. I'll take your trucks for you, Toby. He buffered up to Toby's trucks. Toby's driver coupled Henry to the trucks. Henry pumped his piston and chuffed back down the track to the wishing tree. Then Henry saw Thomas at a signal. He had a long line of empty trucks to take to the quarry. I'll take your trucks for you, Thomas. Thomas happily agreed. So Henry reversed onto Thomas's track and he slowly wished away. Then Henry saw Percy at a water tower. Percy had to take truckloads of empty milk churns to the farm. Percy, I'll take your trucks for you. Thank you, Henry. Percy shunted his trucks onto the main line. Henry buffered up to Percy's trucks and whooshed away. Then Henry saw Emily. She had empty trucks to take to the coaling plant. I'll take your trucks for you, Emily. Thank you, Henry. So Emily shunted her train onto the main line. And Henry coupled up. He chuffed happily away. Henry had the longest line of trucks a big engine could pull. At last, Henry puffed to the Wishing Tree Junction. He left Emily and Percy's trucks on one track. Then he shunted Thomas's trucks onto another. Finally, he shunted Toby's trucks onto the express line. All the lines to the wishing tree were blocked. Now nobody can get through. The wishing tree will be safe. At Brendam Docks, the special woodsmen were waiting. Henry hadn't arrived, so the docks manager asked Salty to take the woodsman. Aye, yes, sir. Salty tried to get to the wishing tree, but all the tracks were blocked with trucks. 
Henry was still feeling very happy. Then he heard Harold hovering over him. Henry, old chap, the special woodsmen can't get through to the wishing tree. They're the only ones that can help. Without them, the tree will have to be cut down. Oh dear, the woodsmen are here to save the wishing tree, not cut it down. I have made a very big mistake. Henry felt terrible. Now I must put everything right as fast as I can. And he chuffed quickly away. First, Henry took Toby's trucks to the depot. Then he took Thomas's trucks to the quarry. Next, he took Emily's trucks to the coaling plant. Finally, he took Percy's trucks of empty milk churns to the farm. At last, all the tracks were clear. Henry collected the special woodsman. Thank you, Salty. Then he wished quickly away. Soon, Henry chuffed up to the wishing tree. The woodsmen were ready to start their very special work. They cleared and propped. They clipped and chopped. And Henry helped too. Soon the wishing tree was standing tall again. The wishing tree was saved. I wish the wishing tree would last forever and ever. The special woodsman cheered, and Henry smiled his biggest smile ever. Duncan and the hot air balloon. It was a beautiful day in the hills of Sodor. It was also the Thin Controller's twins' birthday. Every year, Duncan gave the twins a special birthday ride. Duncan was excited. At the depot, Duncan was getting ready. He had to look his best. His special birthday flag had been fixed to his cab. Duncan was very proud of his flag. Mr. Percival came to see Duncan. Shall I pick up the twins now? No, Duncan. This year, I'm giving them a ride in a hot air balloon for their birthday. Duncan was disappointed. He wanted to give the twins their birthday treat. Duncan, you must collect a hot air balloon from the transfer yards. Yes, sir. And he chuffed sadly away. Duncan pulled into the transfer yards. Thomas had brought the balloon from the docks. The balloon man was filling it with hot air. Hello, Duncan. Hello, Thomas. That's a wonderful balloon. You be sure to puff slowly and carefully. So Duncan huffed slowly away to Mr. Percival's house. On his way, Duncan rolled over a bumpy track. His flatbed clanked, rattled and jiggled. One of the ropes holding down the balloon came undone. Oh dear, thought Duncan. The bumpy track has jiggled the balloon loose. What shall I do? Then an idea flew into Duncan's funnel. If I jiggle the balloon more, it might float away. Then I could give the twins a ride today and they could have a balloon ride tomorrow. So Duncan began to jiggle backwards and forwards over the bumpy track. The ropes loosened and the balloon floated away. Hooray! and Duncan chuffed cheerily to the Thin Controller's house. Duncan puffed round a bend. Then he stopped. The hot air balloon had floated down. It was right in front of him on the track. Duncan bumped into the balloon. Flatten my funnel. Now what should I do? The basket wobbled. 
and one of the sandbags fell off. It made the balloon rise up a little. Duncan was puzzled. He biffed the balloon again. More sandbags fell off. The balloon rose higher and higher and floated away. Duncan was delighted. Duncan chuffed round another bend. Bus ma buffer. There, on the bridge above him, was the balloon. I thought the balloon had floated away. What shall I do now? He thought. Duncan chuffed his biggest puff. The hot smoke from his funnel flew into the balloon. It made the balloon get bigger. This gave Duncan an idea. He huffed and puffed and puffed and huffed. The balloon got bigger and bigger and floated away. Duncan was delighted. He raced to the Thin Controller's house. The Thin Controller was waiting for him. Where's the hot air balloon, Duncan? It came loose, sir, and floated away. The Thin Controller was upset. Then there was trouble. The balloon floated down from the sky once again, straight towards the weather vane on the Thin Controller's roof. It burst on the sharp point. The balloon tumbled down. Fizzling fireboxes. Duncan was upset. Now the twins wouldn't have their balloon ride at all. It's all my fault, sir. I just wanted to give the twins their birthday treat, just as I always have. The Thin Controller was cross. Duncan, you were going to give the twins their birthday ride. You were going to pick them up and bring them here. Duncan felt even more upset. He wanted the twins to have a happy day. Sir, Peter Sam could pick up the twins. Then I will go and collect the balloon repairman. I'm sure he could fix the balloon. The Thin Controller thought this was a very good idea. So Duncan puffed quickly away. Duncan raced into Mountain Village Station. The balloon repairman was waiting. We must be quick, sir. The balloon has to be fixed before the twins get home. Duncan chuffed quickly back to the Thin Controller's house. The Thin Controller was very pleased to see them. The balloon repairman looked at the hole in the balloon. Oh dear, it's a very big hole. I don't have enough material to fix it. I know, sir. My birthday flag, it might just be big enough. The balloon repairman looked at Duncan's flag. Well, yes, Duncan. That would be perfect. The balloon repairman fixed the balloon just in time. Peter Sam arrived with the twins. They were delighted. Soon, Mr Percival and the twins were floating high above the island of Sodor. And Duncan felt so happy he thought his boiler would burst. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. Push me, pull you. One bright spring morning at the coal yard, 
the yard manager was talking to Scar Lowy. A puppet show is coming. The children will be excited. No one in the hills has ever seen a puppet show. Scar Lowy wanted to pull the puppet show special, so he raced away. Scar Lowy puffed into the transfer yard. Thomas and the thin controller were already there. Please, sir, may I pull the puppet show special? That's a fine idea, Scar Lowy. Scar Lowy's boiler bubbled with excitement. Watch out! They're heavy! Scar Lowy buffered up. Slowly, Scar Lowy puffed away. The trucks were heavy. But Scar Lowy was happy. The puppet show special was his. Scar Lowy heaved and hauled up the steep hill. At last, he reached the top. Reneus was there. He was very excited to see the puppet show special. Those trucks look heavy. I could help you. But Scar Lowy didn't want to share his special with Reneus. No, thank you. I can pull these trucks on my own. <laughs> I'm stronger than you. No, you're not. Oh, yes, I am. Then an idea flew into Scar Lowy's funnel. We'll put the trucks between us and pull our hardest. The strongest engine will pull the puppet show special. Reneus was soon coupled up to the back of the train. They pulled with all their strength and steam. First, the trucks trundled one way, then they trundled the other. Scar Lowy was determined to win. Then Reneus heard a creaking and a cranking. He knew the couplings were being pulled too hard. But Scar Lowy wouldn't give up. I must win, he thought. Then there was trouble. With a crack and a clank, Reneus's coupling snapped. The puppet show trucks bashed and bumped into Scar Lowy and pushed him down the other side of the hill. Scar Lowy was scared. He tried to apply his brakes, but they wouldn't work. Scar Lowy flew faster and faster down the steep hill. Scar Lowy saw Duncan. He was pushing trucks and bunting onto the main track. Look out, Duncan! Stop! But it was too late. Scar Lowy crashed into Duncan's trucks. Bunting flew into the air. It fell all over Scar Lowy. Duncan was cross. Oh, sorry, Duncan, but I must get the puppet show to the children. Scar Lowy raced on. The puppet show special clattered and chattered. Then Scar Lowy saw Rusty at a junction ahead. Rusty was pulling trucks of special ice cream. Out of my way! I can't stop! Rusty stopped right across the tracks. Scar Lowy bashed into Rusty's trucks. Ice cream flew into the air and splattered all over the engines. Rusty was cross. Now there would be no ice cream at the puppet show. Sorry, Rusty, but I must get the puppet show to the children. So Scar Lowy clattered on. Scar Lowy was puffing towards Percival Pond. Then there was trouble. Scar Lowy went round the bend too fast. He steamed into a siding. Scar Lowy bashed through the buffers. With a splash, a sploosh and a splosh, Scar Lowy plunged into Percival Pond. Fizzling fireboxes. I wanted to pull the puppet show special on my own. Now look what I've done. The children won't have ice cream or flags, and they won't have their puppet show. Help! But there was no one there to hear. Then Scar Lowy heard a whistle he knew. That's Reneus, he thought. Reneus puffed to the edge of the pond. 
Scar Lowy had never been happier to see his friend. I puffed as quickly as I could. Ha <laughs> ha, I thought you might need my help. I, uh, I do. I wanted to show you that I was the strongest. But all I have shown you is that I am the silliest. But Reneus was happy to help. Slowly Reneus heaved and hauled his friend out of the pond. At last, Scar Lowy was back on the rails, but his firebox was out, and his coal was wet. Reneus, you must take the puppet show to the children. I have other jobs to do. <gasps> Thank you, Scar Lowy. And Reneus puffed proudly away with the puppet show special. Scar Lowy had a lot to do. He delivered new trucks of ice cream to Rusty. Then Scar Lowy found Duncan. Duncan's trucks were now filled with the bunting. I'm going to be late for the puppet show. Don't worry, Duncan. I'll help you. We'll steam to the showground in no time. Duncan and Scar Lowy arrived just in time. The children were gathered round the puppet show. Welcome everyone to the first puppet show in the hills. The children cheered. Scar Lowy puffed up to Reneus. You're my best friend, Reneus, and there's nothing stronger than friendship. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. Thomas and the Billboard. Knapford is the biggest station on the island of Sodor. All the engines love its bustling busyness. Today was a very special day. It was Knapford Station's birthday and there was going to be a grand party. All the engines were very excited. They were to have their photograph taken. The photograph was going to be put up on a billboard. Thomas felt very proud. I've never been on a billboard before. But the photographer was having trouble fitting all the engines into the photograph. Um. Move back a bit there, James. Uh, and you forward, Percy. Yes, that's good, that's good. Now, Diesel, can you move in? Diesel moved in. The camera flashed. Thomas didn't know that Diesel had rolled right in front of him. And neither did Diesel. Later that day, Thomas puffed into Marin Station to pick up the new billboard. He was very excited. But when Thomas saw it, he was very disappointed. Diesel's right in front of me, Thomas thought sadly. No one can see me at all. Thomas puffed towards Knapford. Diesel moved in front of me on purpose, huffed Thomas to himself. Thomas felt cross. He wasn't looking where he was going. Then there was trouble. There was a cow on the line. Thomas turned quickly into a siding just in time. He hit the buffers and the billboard flew into the lake. Thomas went to tell the photographer what had happened. Don't worry, I'll take another photograph. Tell all the engines to meet me at Tidmouth Sheds. Thomas was about to set off. Then he saw Diesel. 
Thomas knew he should tell Diesel about the new photograph, but Thomas was worried. What if Diesel spoils this one too, thought Thomas. So Thomas didn't tell Diesel. Soon, all the engines, except Diesel, were back at Tidmouth. Gordon was cross. Mr. Giggles, the famous clown, is coming to the party tonight. I must collect him from the airport. I must not be late. And I have to pick up the brass band from Brendam Docks. And I have to collect the bunting and decorations from Wellsworth. Uh, uh, OK, I'll fetch the photographer right away. Thomas was steaming to Marrow. Then he saw Diesel. Diesel was puffing straight to Tidmouth. Thomas was worried. Now Diesel would find out about the new photograph. So Thomas turned onto a branch line and he raced back to Tidmouth. There's been a mistake. You'll all have to come back later. The engines were very cross. Soon they had all gone and Diesel trundled straight by. Later, Thomas had gathered the engines again. Then Thomas went to Marin to collect the photographer. Just as the photographer was climbing on board, Thomas saw Diesel. Now Diesel would see the photographer and he would find out about the new photograph. So Thomas wished lots of steam. It billowed from his boiler and filled the whole station. So Diesel didn't see the photographer and he trundled straight by. The steam has made my camera wet. I'm sorry, sir. We'll have to wait for it to dry. Tell the engines to come back later to Tidmouth. So all the engines came back later, instead of doing their jobs. At last the photographer was ready. No one had noticed Diesel wasn't there. Thomas was very relieved. But just then, Diesel oiled round the bend. Diesel was surprised to see all the engines. He screeched to a halt. Rolls of bunting went everywhere. No one told me there was another photograph. But I asked Thomas to tell everyone. All the engines looked at Thomas. Thomas felt terrible. The fat controller was very cross. Gordon, you were meant to pick up Mr Giggles, the famous clown. Emily, you were meant to pick up the brass band. And James, you were meant to pick up the bunting and decorations. None of you arrived, so Diesel had to do all your jobs. And now he is late to do his own work. Thomas was very upset. It's all my fault, sir. I didn't want Diesel to know about the new photograph. In the last one, he moved right in front of me, on purpose. I did not. The photographer told me to move. I did. Perhaps you rolled too far. Thomas knew then he'd made a mistake. I'm sorry, Diesel. I was wrong to think you did it on purpose. And I'm very sorry for causing all this trouble, sir. Soon, all the engines were lined up. The new photograph was taken. Sir, if I do all Diesel's jobs, can he collect the new billboard? That's a wonderful idea, Thomas. Diesel agreed. For the rest of the day, Thomas worked hard. He did all Diesel's jobs. And Diesel picked up the new billboard, just in time for the celebrations. It was a wonderful party. There were clowns and a brass band. Diesel and Thomas agreed that the new billboard was the best billboard they'd ever seen. Gordon takes a shortcut. Gordon is a very proud engine. 
He likes to do important jobs. Gordon thinks he knows the Sodor Railway better than anyone. Gordon was at Knapford Station waiting for Stanley. Stanley was late. Gordon had to take Stanley's passengers on to Brendam Docks. At last, Stanley puffed in. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late. I took a shortcut, but I got lost. I never get lost. I know the railway better than any other engine. Some very important passengers and a group of workmen are waiting at Great Waterton. The first engine to arrive will pick up the very important passengers. The second will collect the workmen. Gordon didn't want to pick up the workmen. He wanted to pick up the very important passengers. I've got to get coal and water. See you at Great Waterton, Gordon. And Stanley chuffed cheerily away. Gordon was determined to arrive at Great Waterton first, so he raced off to Brendam Docks. Gordon delivered Stanley's passengers and puffed away to Great Waterton as quickly as his boiler could bubble. Gordon puffed up to a junction. He could see Stanley ahead. Gordon was worried. Then he had an idea. If I take a shortcut, he huffed to himself, I will arrive at Great Waterton before Stanley and I won't get lost. So Gordon took the other track. Gordon steamed happily along his shortcut. He stopped at the signal. Duck was having a washdown. Doc was surprised to see Gordon so far from the express track. Uh, are you lost? Would you like some help? No, thank you. I'm not lost. And Gordon chuffed away. Gordon steamed further along his shortcut. I should be at Great Waterton by now, he thought. Gordon puffed around a bend. Ahead, there was a bridge. Hooray! That must be the Great Waterton Bridge. But under the bridge, it wasn't Great Waterton. It was a repair yard. Gordon saw Oliver and Toad. They were having their wheels oiled. They were surprised to see Gordon so far from the express track. Are you lost? Would you like some help? No, thank you, I'm not lost. And Gordon chuffed quickly away. Gordon steamed along. Now he was more worried. His shortcut was taking longer and longer. Then he saw another bridge. Hooray! Here's the Great Waterton Bridge. But under the bridge, it wasn't Great Waterton. It was the shunting yard of a logging station. Gordon had never been here before. Then in the distance, he heard Stanley's whistle from the track below. Stanley is catching up, he huffed to himself. I must race ahead. Gordon pumped his pistons. Then there was trouble. Ben was shunting a flatbed of logs. Gordon biffed straight into them. The logs started to roll down the hill. Bust my buffers, those logs will block the lower track. I must stop Stanley. But Gordon didn't know which track to take. Gordon was lost. What have you done? Gordon knew his shortcut hadn't worked. Now he needed to ask for help. Can you help me, Ben? I have to get to the lower track as fast as possible. Of course. Ben was happy to help. Soon the track was clear and Gordon steamed away. He had to warn Stanley. Then Gordon arrived at a fork in the track. He didn't know which way to go next. Gordon saw Oliver and Toad puffing toward him. Please stop! I'm lost. I need to get to the lower track as quickly as possible. Oliver was happy to help. 
take the left track. And Gordon raced on. Gordon arrived at another fork in the track. He didn't know which way to go. Then he saw Duck chuffing over a bridge. Please stop, I'm lost and I'm in a hurry. Duck was happy to help. You must take the track on the right. Thank you. And Gordon steamed off. At last, Gordon puffed on to the lower track. He could see the logs had fallen across Stanley's line. Then he saw Stanley chuffing round the bend. Gordon blew his whistle long and loud. Stop, Stanley! Stop! Stanley applied his brakes and screeched to a halt just in front of the logs. Soon Rocky arrived. He cleared the logs in no time. I'm sorry, Stanley. This was all my fault. I wanted to take a shortcut. I wanted to pick up the very important passengers. But now I want you to collect them. Stanley was delighted. Later, the very important passengers were all on board Stanley's carriages. Stanley felt very proud. Gordon puffed in to collect the workmen. I won't be taking any shortcuts this time. Stanley laughed, and Gordon smiled at his new friend. Don't go back. Thomas is a busy engine. He is very good at shunting. Thomas thinks he can shunt backwards and forwards faster than any other engine. One day, Thomas and Diesel were waiting at the quarry. The quarry manager arrived. Thomas, I have a very important job for you. You must fill lots of trucks with stone. Henry will arrive soon to collect them. Yes, sir. I have an important job too. I'm sure I'll fill my trucks first. No, you won't. I can be so steamy any day. I'll race you to the hopper. Thomas was sure he could win the race and do his job. But Diesel wanted the race to be tricky. He had a devious idea. We have to go backwards. All right, I'll win. So the two engines raced away, backwards. Steamies are fast and steamies are first, Thomas huffed to himself. Thomas was determined to win. Thomas and Diesel took separate tracks to the hopper. I'm sure to win now, Thomas thought to himself. Thomas steamed towards the hopper. I'm first, but Thomas couldn't see that Diesel had arrived first behind him. Thomas bashed into Diesel. Stone poured down from the hopper. Thomas was covered from funnel to footplate in dust. Ha <laughs> ha, silly slow steamy, I won the race. Thomas wanted to beat Diesel. We'll have another race to the washdown and this time I'll win. Well, we still have to race backwards. So together, the two engines whooshed away. Thomas and Diesel race buffer to buffer. Steamies are fast and steamies are first, huffed Thomas to himself. Mavis was at the washdown. She was enjoying a soapy soak, but Thomas couldn't see Mavis. He raced backwards into the washdown and biffed into Mavis, who came off the rails. Ooh, rattling rods, ooh! Then Diesel rolled in. I won. Thomas forgot about Mavis. Thomas was enjoying being the winner. Yeah, well, we both won a race. We must have one more. Thomas was no longer thinking about his job. All right, let's race to the engine sheds. Whoever wins this race is the fastest. 
diesel revved his engine. Thomas pumped his pistons. And the two engines raced quickly away, backwards. Thomas steamed into the lead. Steamies are fast and steamies are first, he huffed to himself. Thomas had to win this race, but Diesel rattled alongside him. Then there was trouble. Harry and Bert were enjoying a rest at the engine sheds, but Thomas and Diesel couldn't see them. They raced backwards towards Harry and Bert. With a crash and a bash, Thomas and Diesel smashed Harry and Bert right through the back of the engine sheds. Stones and timber flew everywhere. Bust my buffers! Oh, no! Then, Henry arrived. I've come to collect my train. Your train isn't ready. Then the yard manager arrived. Thomas, you have pushed Mavis off the rails and Harry and Bert right through the back of the engine sheds. Thomas felt worse than ever. Oh no, it's all my fault. I should have done my job and not raced against Diesel. Come on, let's have one more race. No, Diesel, I have an important job to do. Thomas puffed over to Henry. I'll fill your trucks as fast as I can. Your train will soon be ready. And Thomas chuffed quickly away. Thomas felt terrible. I must work very hard to put everything right, he thought to himself. Thomas shunted the trucks under the hopper. Soon they were all filled. And Henry puffed happily away with his train. Then Thomas collected Rocky. Rocky lowered Mavis back onto the tracks. I'm sorry I bashed you. I was trying to win a race. Mavis was relieved to be back on track. Next, Thomas shunted Rocky over to the sheds. Harry and Bert were soon back on the rails. I'm sorry I biffed you. I should have done my job instead of trying to be the fastest. Then, Diesel rolled in. We must clear all the trucks of broken stones. Yes, Thomas. At last, all the trucks were loaded with broken rubble from the sheds. So together, Thomas and Diesel shunted the trucks as quickly as they could. At last, all the jobs were done. We still don't know who's the fastest. Let's have another race. All right, but this time we must go forwards. So the two engines raced away to the quarry gates. And they both arrived together.